Can you hear that? Hmm. Is it thumping under the floorboards or? There it is. That is the sound. Dear, dear listeners. Of dear Virginia watchers. having not eaten dinner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if only that's how my stomach sounded when I got it <laughs> No, that was our producer, Mr. Elliot. There he is. Right, buddy. Say hi to everyone. Say hi. He's like, Mom, put me down. I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Orange fluff has now gone everywhere. <laughs> Sure, you can probably see it a little bit. I know you know nothing about the orange nope. fluff. <laughs> I would never, 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 know. never know it. I would oh, never know. There we go. <laughs> a little ASMR for everyone. Wait, wait, I can do more ASMR. Now there's a sound I can appreciate. <laughs> the turning of the a book. Turning of pages, the yes. Turning of pages in a book. We're, we're back for another installment of our summer reading program. The program. We can put Poe into anything, really. That's. <laughs> I think Jeannie and uh, Carmen would appreciate that summer reading. Hundred percent program. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can hear Carmen giggling in my head. Yeah. Yep. Oh, oh. All right. Well, I guess we should <laughs> we get should, right into it. <laughs> I wish you could see what he's doing on my lap. It's ridiculous. But let's get uh, into it before all right. everything falls down. <laughs> yeah. All right. And here we go. Part two. Part two. The sky, it's dark, and the wind is blowing. Come inside, sit down with a cup of tea, while we tell you a little story, a story that lies beyond the oblong box. With your hosts, Levi Leland and Virginia Poe. Oh, you I had just, to do the you had to do the librarian thing. I had to. <laughs> I had to. Every time I do this, I. <laughs> <sighs> oh my goodness! No, the whole time, the whole time, Elliot, what are you doing, bud? You gonna sit down? There's no way anyone can be quiet when they read this next. No. This next book, you'll be absolutely not. shrieking and gasping and. Screaming and crying. And wanting more. <laughs> and wanting more. <laughs> because today, <laughs> if you can't tell, if you cannot tell, again, wearing wearing a creature feature shirt with the wonderful font of a one mister, Chris, Chris Grimley. Grimley. Virginia yes, the Creature is... is featuring her second creature feature shirt. <gasps> there we go. <laughs> and that's not even all of them. I've got a lot. Um, yeah. So um, we are indeed covering Tales of Death and Dementia, um, which I, th this copy, uh, of course, both of my copies are first editions, um, but this one's super special for me because I has it inscribed. Yay. Love that. It's so happy. I love it. Uh, most people would be like, and what in the hell is happy about this? Pardon my French. But I'm like, oh, but this this is my happy place. So Yeah. It's but, very yeah. special. It's and it's yours. Special. And it's mine. Mm -hmm. And it's got my name in it. And if anybody wants to say it's not my copy, I can say it's got my name in it. That's right. 
<laughs> oh, oh, did you just, our other producer is uh, uh, giving me his uh, opinion. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it sounded like you said cut, so I don't know if there's something you're not doing right or. Eh, we'll just, we'll keep going. <laughs> <laughs> we'll fix it in post. All right. All and right. This so also, book. yes, another oh, edition yes. that's available. Same thing, just different same cover. Book different cover and it's a paperback rather than a hard cover but it's all the same stories and illustrations but you can just get get it in a different copy if you want kind it's, of a flashy telltale heart it's almost like that's the version the one with, that's for like adults yeah like the adult this is like you know i don't know graphic novel mm -hmm, mm. style you know but that's yeah. what I was trying to think. I was so. like, I was like, why does this feel oddly <laughs> familiar to me? Right. Yeah. So, so, um, this particular book published in 2009, um, <clears throat> again, it is also from the, um, Anathan books for young readers, part of Simon and Schuster publishing company, um, Simon and Schuster's children's publishing company let me get that right again just like with the last book um tales of mystery and madness it is done in pen ink and watercolor um so the illustrations are amazing now if you actually believe that this was first published in 2009 amazon would like to tell you that this was originally published on january the 1st 1847 interesting all it right. truly says know. that <laughs> all right chris grimley is really old i had We're no time idea traveler. yeah who knew and that's cool he who probably knew? got to meet poe <laughs> which is i'm jealous yeah i'm very jealous <laughs> no wonder why the illustrations are so good poe probably <laughs> coached him through yes know. yes absolutely because poe was a great artist don't forget, people. Oh, yes, yes. He was a oh, great was visual artist, artist as yep. well as a writer and a poet. Yes. And a speaker. An artist of, of the word. Mm -hmm. So in this particular collection of Poe works, we do have Telltale Heart. We also have, um, is it the system? Wait, why did I just forget that? And mm -hmm. why can I not read my own handwriting? Yes. No, yeah. you are on the, is, system yeah, the system. Yeah, the system of Dr. Tar, Dr. And Tar and, and Professor Feather. Professor Feather, which is a classic. I love that one. It's it's, it's one that doesn't really get talked about very no, much. No, no. And it's and truth be told, I've only read it maybe three or four times. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And but there's, it is good. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's great. It's like and a it, and it's and it's a good piece to go in this like, book too. Yes, yes. It's like <clears throat> th there's like a layer of humor in it, I think. Oh, it, yeah. When I read sure. it. I mean, no, you know, there Poe, is. It's yeah. dark, but it's there. It's dark, but there's like <laughs> a layer of humor. So, of course, Poe was you know, uh he wrote satire, he wrote horror, sure. he wrote mystery, but some of those genres I think kind of intermingle a little bit. Um mm -hmm. And right. some of Poe's like horror, I sometimes take a little lightly because I, I kind of see that comedic element mm -hmm. to it, you know, and that's a good sure. example. That story is a good example. If For those of you who have read it, maybe reread it with that in mind, or maybe if you haven't read it, go into it with that in mind and. Yeah, you might, maybe they'll see it too. I don't know. But that's yeah. a great story. I love it. Yeah, it's a good story. And then, of course, the next in the table of contents is something near and dear to our hearts, the oblong box. Mm -hmm. And then the facts. Wait, what? Why case, is that? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just said that. I don't know. Oh, okay. You're just saying things. <laughs> the oblong box. Things. I don't the know what that box. would relate to, not even in the slightest. No, me either. <laughs> And then the facts in the case of M. Vladimir. Another great one. Another great one, yeah. I mean, that's kind of, in my Can opinion, I say, that one is kind of quintessential. Yes. And I'm going to say this. Don't get mad. Don't Sarah Helen Whitman's favorite story was the facts in the case of M. Really? Yes. I didn't know yes. that. Yes. That was like oh. one of the first Poe stories she read, and it really, like, she was hooked. And, of course, oh, she was very much into mesmerism. 
Oh, so yes, yes. She was uh, the so story sure that very probably, much. Yeah. yeah. That spoke to her. So, yeah. yep. I, I, so. I do remember that she was very much into mesmerism, but I yeah. completely, like, I don't know why I didn't make that, yeah. like, why I wouldn't have just assumed that. Right. But it's also but interesting, too. A lot of Poe's women <clears throat> don't really comment on his works too much when you read. Like, this they don't, is like, true. have, this is like, true. oh, I enjoy. But again, you have that, which I always try to promote the fact that Sarah Helen Whitman was like Poe's intellectual. Was a fan. Yeah, yeah. And a fan and of his work and a writer herself. So she could approach him intellectually yeah, and that's true. artistically, you know? So yes. I love, I love being able to discuss that when I can. So I had to throw right. that in there. <laughs> oh, got a little bit more ASMR. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was a scratchy post. <laughs> there you go. Better your, the post than the curtains or the couch or, yeah, <laughs> you know. no, I've, the producers of, of, of this podcast, at least these producers, the ones that reside in this house, are actually very good about that sort good. of thing. And they've not not ever really done that. Um, God I'm bless them. I'm kind of fortunate. Yeah, I'm yeah. kind of fortunate. <laughs> when it's, it's, the, it, it's all about, like, catching them when they do it and moving them to the place where you want them to do it. Right. And then they it just kind of becomes a, a thing. So it's like sometimes people say you can't train a cat. You actually can. Yeah. Regardless of what they try to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> Cats are trainable. That's a very good point. Yes. Um, yeah. So there's probably going to be a lot of ASMR tonight. Sorry, sorry everyone. <laughs> um, I mean, why am I apologizing? People love ASMR. That's right. Um, They're getting another special element to this podcast. Did, speaking of ASMR, did, did I did I tell you that I, I actually have someone that I know in real life who does listen to our podcast? Um, <clears throat> okay. I didn't know anyone listened to this. That's fantastic <laughs> news. <laughs> we do have listeners, believe it or not. We even have watchers. <laughs> Wow. Who, who'd have thunk? Who'd have thunk? <laughs> um, no, but she she told me a while ago, she was like, it is my favorite thing to put on to go to sleep. And I said, what? And she goes, yeah. She goes, something about your, your back and forth and your conversation. She goes, I just get so relaxed. And I just, it's, it's like my ASMR. I was like, wow. Wow. Okay. okay. All right. So I was like, I was like, someone falls asleep listening to me talk about <laughs> a dead writer. What? That's amazing. I was like, I'm going to take that compliment and run with it. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, now that I know that. Yes. I'm going to turn on the, <laughs> the evening turn, turn voice. On the... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wait, wait, I'll get into character. Mm -hmm. Uh Okay. And now, and now we're going to discuss tales of death and dementia, illustrated by Chris Grimley. Can we even do this with a straight face? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> See, and there I start laughing. All right, so yeah, so this this illustrated book um, again, just like with the with the previous book. Um, it was, it is listed as being for like 11, 12 mm. and up. Um, just like with the last book, it has four short stories, um, all done in a similar, I, I love, I love the, you know, the, the title pages. Yeah. And like the black cat with. With the paw prints and. Paw prints yeah. It's almost bottom. like. It's amazing. Yeah. I love it. I love it. And I'm sorry, but the way he draws a vulture, mm. I love it. It's very yeah. regal. It's just so that's yeah, a regal it's... boy. That's a regal or girl, but it's very yeah. regal. <laughs> or they're just, just so or just I don't a bird. Know. It's just yeah. Regal. His illustrations it. are just very like very very demented in a way like but not in a bad way but in a good mm -hmm. way it's just so in a very good way his characters are very expressive you know they don't have a ton of well, detail I mean, but they have a that. ton of details but i mean it's at, so but look at that like yeah yeah like, look, it's just that is a very expressive they're very look. like 
ugly, but they're also cute, but then they're scary, but then they're it's like, yeah, he just leaves you with it's all a lot these of emotion feelings. All at once. Yeah. And you know, mm-hmm. to mingle them with Poe's <laughs> stories are just genius, you know, and as we discussed in the last episode, it's it's like he couldn't pick better um uh, writings to to base yeah. his illustrations off of. And Absolutely. so it also gets me thinking that he has done two illustrated editions of Poe's works. He needs to do a third one. You can't just have two. I agree. You know? And it's been so a while. It's been if he's watching. A long, yeah, please. Or listening. You have two very um <laughs> Hopeful very, fans. <laughs> very hopeful fans, yes, that you'll do a third edition. Yeah, I think that'd oh be great. God, that would it's be been wonderful. Over ten years since the last one came out. It could be tales of love and loss. Yeah, and he could he could do some poetry. He hasn't poetry. illustrated a poem. Oh. So he could illustrate maybe some poetry. I which hope would he's be listening. An I hope he doesn't think we're crazy. <laughs> he does. He does. But it's fine. <sighs> I know. We're just we're just very big fans, and I do, I do, boast his work quite a lot when people meet. Ah, feet, I love yeah. it. I can't. I like. I can't. I just. Yeah. This the I I do really enjoy this, and again, some of the writing is a bridge. It's yeah. abridged a bit. Um. <clears throat> So, but it's still, it's not like it's, and this is not saying anything negative about any, anything else that's been done so far for Poe writing. But, you know, I I know there are some versions out there where some of the verbiage has been made a little bit more modern, so it's easier for folks to understand. I get that, but I do like that this basically retains the original yeah. text. Yep. Um, <clears throat> but it does cut it down a little bit because even though some of the short stories are quite short, some of the short stories are also quite long and very mm. meaty. And right. especially when you're like kids, I remember being an 11 year old. I was all over the place. Right. I mean, kids are all over the place. <laughs> and so for a kid to sit and read for 15, 20 minutes at a time, for most kids, that's a lot, especially yeah. now in this day and age. Right, right. Every I every mean, kid is on a tablet or something. So reading like is we just... Like right now. Yeah, that's right. And I hope those kids are watching Beyond the Oblong Box. If they're Me not, too. then their then parents are be. failing. <laughs> Then their parents need to step it up, but but yeah, I mean it's 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 beautifully done because it does make it and the between the abridged text and the illustrations contained therein, mm-hmm. um, it really does make it again. It's that <clears throat> almost that graphic novel, comic book esque yeah. kind of setup in a way. That right for a yeah. kid. I mean, for for me, it makes it fun to read. I mean, right? Hey, yeah, you don't awesome. lose. Yeah, you, you don't, don't lose anything. No, you don't lose any bit of Poe's genius within the writings. I mean, nope. you're you're getting the focus is the illustrations, but yep, he uses just the the right parts of Poe's stories to to help push the illustrations along and vice versa. Mm-hmm. His illustrations help pull the narrative along. And yes, it's abridged. Yes, there are pieces pulled out, but it doesn't, Where's you know, if, point? if anything, this, you know, you, you're not going to pick this up to say, Oh, I want to read Poe. Mm-hmm. You pick it up to say, Oh, I want to read Poe, but I want to look at some really cool illustrations to go along with Poe. Mm-hmm. You, if you want to read Poe's works in full and, in a more serious way, you'll obviously pick up his complete works and read the full mm-hmm. versions of the stories, you know, but this doesn't, this doesn't take away anything from Poe's writings. It just, it, mm-hmm. it, it just helps marry the illustrations with the text and Grimley does it perfectly. Yes. 
um, you know, I don't, I, I wouldn't discourage anybody uh, from reading them or, or picking them up because, you know, oh, well, you don't get, you know, the, the full text. It, it, it really doesn't matter in this context, you know, mm -hmm. um, totally worth, worth purchasing, um, which by the way, probably a good time to plug his website. Oh, yes. Um, so you can, because you can, um, he has illustrations for sale. Um, mm -hmm. I Prints don't remember and if there's, buttons, stickers, yeah, every, and, and I books. I think there so. might be even shirts. I don't yep. remember. Um, I did look at it the other day, but I, my brain is not, I, I went to see which books he had still listed up on the site. Because um, <clears throat> I also know he's, I don't, I feel like he was doing something, but near where he lives um, for a screening of Pinocchio, I think, but okay. that was a little bit ago, but I, yeah. I don't, I don't remember right off the top of my head, but if you were to go to www.madcreator, that is M A D C R E A T O R.com um, or to grisgrimly.com. Um, either one of those links will take you boom to his website. Yeah. Um, so you can yeah. support him directly. Yeah. I mean, of course these books are available pretty much anywhere. They sell books, I would say, but yes. you know, if you want to directly support the, uh, the illustrator, I was going to say author, the illustrator, <laughs> <laughs> um, the go creator. right to his website, the creator <laughs> plus, um, it's So do you pay extra to get the book inscribed or does he just kind of throw that in? Like, how does that work? I don't remember how that came to be. Okay. But it's I worth honestly don't. <laughs> noting that if you do purchase directly from him, you could get it inscribed to It's which possible. Is, yes. Yeah. I, I, it's been a hot minute. I yeah. don't remember. I mean, these books did come it's out possible. a while ago now. 2009, yeah. the last one came yeah. out. We're in 2024. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's been a hot minute, as you said. So, yeah. <laughs> and hopefully this encourages him, <sighs> which... Mm -hmm. It probably won't, but you know, make a make a third edition. There are if, so if many we, po if we works. Kinda, to... You know, if we kind of put it into the ether, right? Because you know what, maybe, he didn't do the happen. Raven. I would love to see him illustrate oh my the God, Raven. I would love to see. I mean, so many people have, but right, but to see his that I've ever seen. It, they've always been amazing. I love. I love always seeing that illustrated. Which yeah. we are getting back to. <laughs> Oh God! Yeah, something. well, <laughs> but it it will be coming down the pipeline. We we're having to show yeah. that for a hot yeah. minute. But, but, yeah, but but the Raven has been illustrated I by so many prominent Dave Raven. Yeah, but Grimley should do that. I think. Yeah, maybe his third Please, edition could be on the poetry. You. He should pick a few yes. poems. Yes, pick a few poems. Illustrate them. You Tales know, he he's done off. two editions of of short stories. There's still <laughs> plenty of short. It. Yeah, Just plenty of short stories he can choose from. <laughs> but the poetry might be a cool idea. So mm -hmm. there you go, Chris yeah. Grimley. Yeah, Mr. Grimley, please. We beg of you. If you have not blocked us, please. Oh, I doubt Hear us. No. <laughs> I doubt that. No, I doubt that. No. Um, no, he'd have to actually see it before he uh... <laughs> No. No, blocked us. But, I think uh, he's yeah. probably. I think he would be flattered, honestly. Yeah. So you know, just like, just like before with the previous book, you know, it's got a wonderful table of contents. Again, mm -hmm. that's the table of contents, you guys. Like, I, I really, I really encourage everyone to pick this up, whether you're eleven or a hundred and eleven. Mm -hmm. Just pick it up and read it. You might see something or read something that, and and that you may not have thought about reading before. Because I I can tell you that the system is not one that you really hear people talk about. And no. I think this is great that he put that in there. Yeah, not many it, people. No, uh, that's not one you do think adaptations of, when you of say that. Pope story nope. yeah right nope. it's like you see that you see the telltale heart done the raven you see annabelle lee you see the mask of the red death you see the fall of the house of usher you see black so cat. many yeah the black cat you see those done all the time in yeah you know comics graphic novels mm -hmm. you know um film you know you see yeah but you rarely see that story 
the mouthful. Correct. Story. Yeah, <laughs> tar yeah. and feather. I we'll mean, call it tar I and mean, feather for tar short. Tar and feather. Yeah. Although, tar however, I think there is a movie that's loosely based on the story. We can Ooh, get back to the viewers. I believe you're right. Yeah, there's like a horror movie that's. Right. It's very loosely based, though. It's not. I know who can tell us. Our sisters. Oh yes. I because they're right. doing they're doing their their other thing. Yep. Um, yeah, we should uh, definitely they're, have they're, them. They're wait. They're review morgue. Review morgue. I was gonna there say it wrong. I know. I know. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I was like, no, it's not the morgue review. <laughs> the morgue review. There's an endeavor. Sorry, we Carmen. should review different morgues throughout the country in case anyone's planning on dying. Um, <laughs> they know which morgues would be better to dear to listeners be stored we're just at. gonna put it out there it's been a very long day we've done mm. multiple recordings today <laughs> and i do believe we are getting to the punchy hour <laughs> we are getting to the punchy hour but that's okay yes. that's usually where but we get please fun. stay tuned for the morgue reviews yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. uh yeah but no I'm, I'm i'm almost positive that if if that is what that is that movie. I'm mm. sure Carmen and Jeannie probably Jeannie specifically probably already knows exactly which one. She's probably if she's listening, she's probably yelling. Yeah. At the yep. radio. It's blah blah blah. As often one does when you're listening to a podcast and the hosts go, I'm not quite sure. And you're screaming on the other end. I yeah. do that quite a lot. <laughs> But not in my own podcast. Uh. Oh, wow. But yeah, no, this is um this is a beautiful illustration um book for those if if they did not see the previous episode or listen to the previous episode where we talk about Gris's other collection, which is mm -hmm. Tales of Mystery and Madness. Um that one was done in uh 2003, 2004. But <clears throat> um he again like i said he was he's an author from here in the united states he is from uh nebraska area and uh he's pretty much oh hi greenwood he finally pushed his way in so oh ginger cats do as ginger cats yep. do <laughs> he's definitely he could be elliot's he could be elliot's little brother yeah that's for sure. right yeah <laughs> i'd say so Okay. He definitely cool. has like more of a little mask over his face, yeah. though, like a very white, <laughs> yeah, little, very yep. white there. Mm -hmm. Elliot's very. Where did Elliot go? He's he's definitely more stripey across his head. Yeah. Back to Mister. We're getting sidetracked with Cat. Yes, but, Chris Grimley. Very Mr. humble Grimley. beginning, which I yes. love about him. Yeah. Very humble beginning. You know, um, Nebraska born, farm, farm raised. Is that? He's not he well, he's not like a pound of beef. He's a person, no. but he was raised no, on a but farm. His dad, yeah, his dad yeah. was a farmer. <laughs> his dad was a farmer. So <clears throat> you know, it's not like he grew up in a big city or anything like right, that. Right. Um but his parents the the cool thing about his story is the fact that he did cuz not everybody gets supportive parents who are like, "Yes, let's let's nurture your dreams." Right. Especially when it comes like to like to art. art i'm sorry <laughs> like art my principal told me when i told him i was like into art he said well i hope you like ramen noodles that's what he told me my <laughs> high school principal <laughs> told me that so people are not Sage very advice. encouraging when you have artistic <laughs> dreams people say uh, but and they're not wrong mm. it's not very practical in a lot of cases <laughs> to make a living <laughs> but any, anyone who's involved in any aspect of the arts we are indeed starving artists yeah um yep, yeah that's for sure you, you so, buy you buy that 50 cent hot dog you get that back when it was me the packets of ramen were 10 cents <laughs> um that should probably say something about my age um and uh, you know you you definitely like did not eat well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you um... and and I sometimes worked two or three jobs outside of going to auditions and going to you know casting offices and all the other fun jazz. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely. 
Like, and, and stepping away from the camera and going behind the scenes and doing makeup artistry. Yeah, I, I didn't, I, I did not become a non-starving artist. I was still starving. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yep. but I, like to I think had it's, supportive parents, so. Yep. And that's great. And that's great. And I think art is something that can be a paying hobby at times. That's mm -hmm. how I like to approach it now is that. <laughs> I do not make a living off of my art by any means, but I will, it's a hobby. Mm -hmm. And occasionally people will pay me for pieces and I guess that's okay, but it's, it's not a living. I have a day job. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's just how it is. But Grimley of course has been a very successful he pursued artist it. and he pursued he's it and it. he's, he did it and uh, he deserves it. He's an incredible oh artist. Gosh um amazing we, we cannot recommend his works enough especially because he's a poe fan and he has you know uh incorporated his art with with poe and mm -hmm. you know we can really appreciate that and we really hope he does more yeah i just thought of that now that we we did these episodes Please. i'm like wait a sec it's been a while and he has two. Why not three? You know, make it a trilogy Please. and do, you know. <laughs> we, we're, we're begging. That would be amazing. I'd love to see the Raven. and but I'd love oh to see gosh. some poems. You know, that would be really cool. Um, yeah. Oh, I know. I would I'm take... not going to say it out loud, but I know <laughs> one I would love to see him illustrate. A poem? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> You're not going to say it. Mm-mm. Why? <laughs> I'll tell you off camera. All right. Because it's our something I, it, it's, it's, it, it, yeah. All right. We'll leave our, we'll leave Turning our viewers just. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what is that called online? Is that called vague booking? <laughs> I don't know. I, I think that's what vague. they call it. Okay. <laughs> Where I'm saying something, but I'm not going to tell you yeah. what it is. <laughs> Fair enough. Sorry, everyone. You'll just have to. I coming in 2025 <laughs> yes 2025 that's right this um, is the the um sketchbook chris grimley published um autrum secretum 13 years of hidden truth so he kind of took some illustrations from his oh, sketchbook yes. and just kind of made a yeah, little yeah 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 illustrated that's a cool i like that this is cool lot. but this it says it on the back, adult content. So this is not, not for, for the young reader. <laughs> um, the art, not some of it kids. is a little, uh, a little adult like. So yes, definitely for not adults. for kids. But <laughs> this can kind of, you know, usher the adults from his, you know, young, young audience to to the adult audience. This will kind of, you know, if you're reading the Poe, the illustrated Poe books and, you know, that's kind of gauged for the younger readers and viewers, this will kind of usher the adults into his, his works as well. Um, right. And it's a great book. I love it as an artist, as a, as an illustrator, a drawer. Um, I definitely appreciate his art and I love seeing his process. I just love seeing like what's in his head and what, comes out on the paper it's just mm -hmm. really really cool um so yeah for the adult for the adult readers definitely pick this one up yeah it's it's got some <laughs> really incredible stuff in it yeah ah uh, well i think that's all we can say about that <laughs> so please please everyone your next reading assignment is tales of death and dementia that's right. And we expect a spoken. full report. Yes. Double space times new Roman. Desk. Yes. <laughs> to um, be on my desk. 14 I'm pages. I'm not giving you much time. Do it. <laughs> and on that note, we. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, I think producer Greenwood here is um, asking that we uh, wrap yeah, it up. Maybe, maybe log off. And now he's doing his own <laughs> ASMR on the mic. Uh-oh. All right. All right. So on that note, we will see everybody <laughs> next time. Thank you for yes. tuning in. Yes. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to Beyond the Oblong Box. 
with your hosts, Levi Leland and Virginia Poe. This program is produced by EGNL Brothers Limited with production assistance by Peter D. Come rest in this bosom, arranged and performed by the Ninth Heaven. You can find us online on Facebook at BTOB Podcast, on Instagram at Beyond the Oblong Box, or reach us by email btob1847 at gmail.com. If you'd like to help our show grow, consider becoming a patron by visiting patreon.com slash beyond the oblong box podcast. You can also subscribe, rate, or review the show on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or any of your preferred podcast platforms.